everyone, and uh, welcome to your uh, video tutorial for the R code for this week. So today we're going to be covering uh, panel data and fixed effects models. So we're going to go ahead, open a new R script. Um, so for this week, we're just going to need tidyverse. Uh, we're going to need uh, actually, we're not going to need Stargazer. The only other thing we're going to need is a new package called Fixest. So you'll go and you'll need to go ahead and install that. Um, if you remember how to install stuff, so you can go from the console and just type install.packages and then have the name of the package in quotes and then run that. So the fix s package is going to be super useful for us um, because remember the name of the uh, model that we're using this week is the two-way fixed effects regression. So fix s fixed effects estimation, that's going to be exactly the right uh, tool for doing this estimation. So this week we're going to be using uh, this violent crimes data. So uh, you can go ahead Make sure we've got our packages uh, loaded up. Very good. And we can go ahead and uh, input that data. Call this violent crimes data. Um, just need to find your directory where you stored that data. Read that in. We've got uh, about 1,100, 1,200 rows, 13 columns. And then we'll do the usual thing. We'll clean the data and assign it to this uh, variable DAT using the filter command. OK. So the question that we're wanting to answer uh, this week is, um, what is the, the first question? Where there's going to be two questions. So the first question is, what is the effect of the incarceration rate? So the kind of prisoner population uh, on crimes, OK? Or in particular, violent crimes. That's what we have data on in this data set. So the effect of incarceration rate on violent crimes. Um, let's kind of pause for a moment before we start running any statistics. You know, one thing you might kind of expect is, OK, as incarceration goes rate goes up, uh, potentially we're putting away people who would be committing violent crimes, and then violent crimes should come down, right? But there's also the sense in which only states that have a lot of crime uh, are going to have a high incarceration rate. So maybe there's some kind of um, omitted variable bias here that's going to cause both of these things to be high at the same time. You know, there's also the perspective that, yeah, maybe the rate of uh, incarceration has nothing to do with violent crimes. We know people get incarcerated for a lot of reasons, nonviolent crimes, wrongly incarcerated, things like that. So it's kind of a, an open question as to what the effect of this incarceration rate is going to be. Uh, but we might think, OK, maybe, you know, best case scenario, it, it should be a negative effect. Higher incarceration rate, put people away, crime should be lowered. OK. So having said that, um, one thing that we can start uh, by doing uh, is, say, looking at our data. So our violent crimes variable is going to be this one, VIO. Uh, so that's violent crimes, I think, per 100,000 people. Then we have incarceration rate, so number of people imprisoned per 100,000 people. Um, we have the population. Um, and then we have like average income and we have density. So kind of like the urbanization rate. Then we have the state ID. Uh, we have the year. So we know this is panel data where we observe states, uh, the same state at multiple different points in time um, for multiple different states. And then we have this variable shall, which we're going to come back to later for our second question. Okay. So our Y is maybe going to be violence, and our x is maybe going to be incarceration rate. It's so one thing to start uh, to start with is, like, let's look and see if there's any outliers. So we can use the simple plot command to look at 
a plot of violence against incarceration rate. So let's take a look at that. Okay. And so what we see right away is that maybe it looks like there's a positive relationship here uh, between violence and the incarceration rate. Uh, it also looks like we kind of have some big numbers that might be, you know, potentially treated. We might think these are maybe outliers, um, but maybe not. These are certainly like orders of magnitude. Uh, these points out to the far right in the upper right corner are orders of magnitude bigger than kind of the points that are closer uh, to the uh, axis origin. So actually one thing that I would do kind of after looking at this data is take the log. So we're gonna create two new variables uh, using the mutate command where we take the log of violence and we take the log of the incarceration rate. Recall that when you use the log command in R, it automatically mean it automatically means the natural log, or sometimes called the, the ln ln. So that's how I'm going to denote it when I create these new variables. And we do that, and now we're going to plot our logged variables. And we see kind of like, it's no longer this big right skewed distribution. We kind of have this main cluster of points and then some points a little bit up and then some points a little bit down, but not orders of magnitude bigger, right? So we're gonna work with the log data. Um, so uh, our first basic model that we should always start with is just Y on X. Now we've been working with the LM command uh, however, what I want to introduce today is the FEOLS command, which is part of the fixed est package. So the FEOLS command, you can see OLS, ordinary least squares. So it's computing kind of the same kinds of models we're used to. And the FE stands for fixed effects. Um, but we don't need to use fixed effects. We can just start out with a simple linear regression. So we're going to do violence on incarceration rate. The data we're going to use is DAT. And now the cool thing about FEOLS also is that we can actually specify right in the command that we want heteroscedastic standard errors by specifying this argument vcove equals hetero. And so this will be a kind of our, our first model. We should expect, based on what we're seeing in this plot, that there's going to be a positive significant coefficient coefficient on log incarceration rate, OK? So the next thing we're going to do is what we learned to do last week, which is add in some controls. So we can add in average income. We can add in density. And we can kind of see if that um, has any effect on the beta coefficient on the incarceration rate. So let's take a look. Um, the fix est package has its own display command uh, for the regressions. So we're not using stargazer here. The command is etable. And we're going to list out our two uh, regressions and take a look at the outcome. Got to run that one first. OK, so let's take a look here. Um, we see in the first simple OLS regression, indeed, there's a positive coefficient um, on incarceration rate. Because it's a log-log model, we interpret this as an elasticity. 1% increase in incarceration rate leads to a 1% increase in violent crimes committed. Once we condition on the average income and on the density, we see that the size of the coefficient comes down a little bit, but still it's positive, very strongly significant too, right? We see the ratio of the estimated coefficient to the standard error is way, way bigger than two, right? So we have a p-value that's actually here less than 0.1, okay? So then our last model would be what we learned to do this week, which is the fixed effects model. 
So we're going to include all the controls that we had before, because when we kind of do models, we always want to be sort of building up. We don't want to sort of add one thing and then take away something else. So we're going to be building up. And now this uh, vertical pipe in the formula is going to separate the covariates from the fixed effects. Recall for the fixed effects, what we want is the unit ID, which is in this case, state ID. So that's like we have these 50 states that we observe at multiple points in time. So state ID is gonna be our unit fixed effect or entity fixed effect. And then our year fixed effect is gonna be what covers the time dimension, okay? So that's all there is to it. We just have this vertical pipe and then we add in state ID and year. We have data equals DAT. We continue with our heteroscedastic standard errors and we run this regression. And now we take a look at our E table again. So in the table, we can see we still have our main X variable. We still have our covariates. Um, now below that, we have two extra lines, which is denoted by this fixed effects heading. So state ID and year, yes and yes in our third call in our third column, um, denoting that yes indeed this is a fixed effect model in the final column. The kind of the e table command is smart. It fills in, okay, there were no fixed effects in these previous um, models, so we're going to put no and no, and then um, everything else is kind of like as it was before. The really great thing or the interesting thing here is that once we include the fixed effects, actually the sign on incarceration rate totally flips. Now it's negative and significant, okay? So here we have an elasticity of if incarceration rate goes up by 1%, the violent crimes uh, per capita are gonna go down by about 0.1%, um, right? Or sometimes people will interpret this as a 10% increase in incarceration leads to a 1% drop in violent crimes, okay? So the fixed effects have clearly captured something which is like uh, an omitted variable that varies kind of at the state level. Some states, for whatever systemic reason, tend to be high crime and high incarceration rate. Once we include a fixed effect, that captures that unobserved reason, then we're looking within a state when there's more incarceration, does crime go down? And in this data, at least in this US data, the answer is yes, okay? So uh, you can imagine all of kind of the different omitted variables that the state ID is capturing. Uh, you can also experiment and see, you know, is it state ID that's helping out? Uh, or is it the year, right? So let's say, okay, we have a fixed effect model that's only state IDs to start, uh, that's reg three. And then our final full fixed effect is reg four. So actually here, what is being suggested is the state ID is not necessarily what's doing it. Because when we only include the state ID fixed effect, we still have a positive relationship between incarceration and violence. It's only once we condition on year fixed effects as well. So accounting for unobserved year specific variables that may be kind of raising or lowering both violent crimes and the incarceration rate. Only once we do that, do we get the negative on incarceration rate. Okay. Awesome. So this is kind of the table of output that you should expect to have um, for your homework this week. And if you are going to use panel data on your project, then this is the kind of table of output I would expect there as well. Okay. Awesome. So let's ask one more question. Uh, and here I'm going to ask, what is the effect of uh, gun ownership on violent crimes, okay? So in the US, there's this big debate, you know, which is absent from the rest of the world because I think we've kind of figured it out. Um, but in the US, they wonder, 
you know, if we increase the amount of gun ownership, is that going to reduce violent crimes? Because maybe people will be scared to commit a crime if they know the person they're robbing might be carrying a gun. Okay. So that's an argument that they make. Uh, so our question will be, all right, is that, is that true? So um, here then, let's look back at our data set. The X variable that we're going to use is this variable shall. So what is shall? So shall is a binary of a Bernoulli variable that's going to equal one for a state in a year if that state has liberalized its gun carrying laws. Okay. What does that mean exactly? So this there's this shall carry law uh, that's passed or not passed at the state level in the US, um, which is essentially like reducing the need for background checks. Like you don't need to have a reason to own a gun. You can just buy a gun like for whatever reason. So when shall equals one, you're kind of like able to buy a gun for whatever reason, okay? So that's a more liberal gun ownership environment. So that's gonna be our X variable. When a state passes one of these laws, does violence increase or does it decrease, okay? Violent crimes, sorry, not just uh, violence. So let's take a look. Um, so what are we gonna do? Um, well, first we can run a regression. So we'll call it reg five and we'll continue to use log violence. And now shall is going to be our um, X variable. And we can include everything else as control. So the incarceration rate, the average income, the density, we have our fixed effects, and then we have our heteroscedastic standard error. Okay. We do our e-table after running this model. And we had a little typo. And what we see is a negative coefficient um, that is very insignificant, right? The magnitude of the estimated coefficient is about one-tenth the size of the standard error. So this has a t-value, you know, 0.1, basically. Uh, there's no way that this is anywhere close to a p-value of less than 0.05, right? If you want to know what is the p-value, well, it's two times p norm negative absolute value of the numerator over the denominator. All right, so we see a p value of 92%. So if there is truly no effect of this type of liberal gun carrying law on violence, then we would expect to see a coefficient like this 92% of the time, right? A coefficient of like this or more extreme 92% of the time. Very, very likely to see this, okay? So that's uh, that's good. But what I want to demo for you guys actually is the event study. So remember in class, if you have a panel data model where the treatment is Bernoulli, where it, which it is here, then you can do this event study to assess parallel trends and look at the treatment effects um, in like a dynamic sense, okay? So how do we do that? So we're going to need to create uh, two new variables, okay? We're gonna need a variable that captures is a state in the treatment group? By that, I mean, does a state ever pass one of these liberal caring laws? So we're going to create a new variable called treat, which is going to be equal to the max of this shall variable within each state. So basically, this code is saying, look within each state and then create this variable treat. It's going to be equal to a one if shall is ever equal to one. And if shall is never equal to one, if it's always zero, then this is not a treated state. And the max of that will be zero. And so treat will be zero. The next variable we need to create is a time to treatment variable. Okay. So we'll call this relative treatment. Um, so relative treatment 
this is going to be uh, if we have a treated unit. So if treat is equal to one, so this variable that we just created, um, if we have a treated state, then what we want is the difference between the year and the first year such that shall, so the shall carry law is equal to one. Okay, so this is like a little complex piece, a little complex piece of code. So let me just go through it again. So we have an if else. So if treat is equal to one, then looking within a state, we're gonna create this relative treatment variable, which says, let's take the year. So the current year in the current row and subtract the year when the law was first passed, which is the smallest year such that this shall carry law was in effect was equal to one, okay? And if we were not treated, then relative treatment is just always gonna be set to zero. Okay, like it was, there was never a treatment. Um, so actually it's, it's not really gonna matter what we set it to, but let's just set it to zero. All right, so let's see. Object treat not found. It's because we didn't run line 30, I guess. Yeah, okay, perfect. Great, okay. And now um, what we can do is we can run the two-way fixed effects event study. And what we need to do is we specify our equation. And instead of our X variable, which is shall, we include this I, which says, let's do the interaction between relative treatment, treatment, a relative treatment, are you a treated state? And then we want the reference point to be sort of negative one. And I'll talk about what that means uh, in a second, once we see the plot. Then we can include all of our um, controls and we include our fixed effects. And we have our data and we have our header scholastic standard errors. So we run that. And then all we need to do is run this command iplot on that uh, variable we just estimated. Put our reference line as negative one. Our x label is years to treatment. And then our main is uh, event study gun carrying on violence. Okay. Lovely. All right, so here's our event study. So let me break it down just like in class. So on the x-axis, we have years to treatment. So this is how many years is it until the state passes the shall carry law. So we go from negative 20 uh, up to zero and then up to positive 20. Okay. So this is relative time relative to the, to the treatment, which happens at time zero. Okay. Then on the y-axis, we have kind of the relative um, magnitude or the relative difference uh, between these states that will pass the shall carry law, so the treated states, and the states that will not, okay? So this is our treated group relative to our control group. Um, and in this pre-period, what we see is there's some wiggling of the trends but the standard errors, the, the confidence intervals always cover zero. So it is the case that there is no pre-trend here, that our states that pass the law relative to the states that do not pass the law in the years before the law gets actually passed at time zero, there's no difference in the trends in violence, okay? So it's not the case that states that eventually pass the law have like a big positive trend in violence or a big negative trend in violence, right? These points just hover around zero. So no trend in violence, okay? And then we see post-treatment for the first, I don't know, 12, 12, 13 years. Again, we see zeros. And then it looks like there's this big drop in violence 
at like the 13th year, okay? Um, which is probably where this small negative is coming from in terms of the fixed effect estimate, okay? But you'll notice that in our data set, um, what's going on is we have from 1977 to 1999. So we actually only have 22 years of data. So you might ask yourself, how is it, if only we have 22 years of data, we can estimate coefficients from 20 years before a state passes all the way up to 20 plus years, 22 years after a state passes. And the reason that we can estimate that is because for some states, they don't pass the law until very, very late in the sample, right? Maybe they pass it only in 1995. And so for them, we do have 20 years of data free treatment. And then for some states, they pass it right away. They're at the beginning of the sample. And so for them, we do have 22 years of post-treatment. So what I'm saying here is that these points here and these points here are not estimated using our whole set of states, especially these ones here. These are only the states that had the law passed right away because those are the only states where we can see post-treatment 20 years later, right? They need to have had passed it right away because we only have 22 years of data. So these guys are kind of a different set of states so what I would recommend is when you're doing this kind of event study and you're interpreting it, you should really only look kind of around the treatment timing, like around the treatment itself. So one thing that you can do is when you think about this relative treatment variable, you can kind of take a look and see using the table command, how many observations do we have? Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger just so that we can see it a bit better. Play rerun. Okay. So like I said, um, in terms of relative treatment, this is like the value, okay, negative 20 years. We actually only have three observations. So there's only three states where we have an observation of 20 years free uh, passage of the law, right? And then for 22 years post, there's only four states where we see that. So really like what we wanna do is look like, okay, where are the majority of states? So we have a lot of states kind of uh, starting around kind of negative nine so not 10, nine years prior to the passage of their law. And then, you know, maybe up to like three years uh, post, we still have a lot of states, okay? The reason why there's so many uh, observations at zero, um, because remember what table is doing, it's counting how many times in the data set we see these values. So for rel treat, it's like, how many times do we see zero for this uh, variable? 535, that's because all of our untreated states, our control states, are all coded as zeros, right? For negative one, we see it 25 times. That means there's 25 states where we see them the year before they pass the law, okay? So we have negative nine through 26, or sorry, negative nine up through kind of three, maybe four years post. So what I would recommend doing is instead of looking at the full event study, uh, one thing that you could do is create a trimmed version of the data where we only look at values of the treatment that were within this window where we actually observe a good number of states. So kind of negative nine uh, to four was what we kind of figured out. And then we can re-estimate using this trimmed data, which I've called DATT, um, based on this filtering. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, and there we see, yeah, around the treatment uh, timing, it's basically flat, right? So now we kind of have like this little, what looks sort of almost like a little pre-trend uh, based on kind of these estimates being higher up here. Um, 
but really it's like around the treatment timing, it's flat. So this really looks like there's no pre-trend and there's no effect of these liberal gun carrying laws on violent crimes. So that's kind of the conclusion from this graph. So the no effect part says, yeah, there's no effect of this policy. The no pre-treatment part says we can trust these estimates because it looks like before the states pass their laws, you know, relative to the states that never passed those laws, they were kind of on a comparable path, right? And they had the same trend, okay? So it's not like they were diverging already even before treatment. So they weren't diverging, we can kind of trust it, okay? So that's all the content for this week. Um, so we can save our code. Our demo seven. So I'll upload this um, and make sure there's a link to the state violence data so you guys can replicate it. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you guys in class this week. All right, take care.